All right, welcome to the land. Well, uh, damn, episode 13. Um, I'm Ian. I'm Rob. And happy New Year. Yeah, Happy New Year. Damn. How's COVID? It was terrible. Well, it was fine. So I really wanted to talk about the new year. Um, God damn it, Oscar. I really want to talk about the new year resolution stuff mm. right when New Year happened, but then I got COVID. Yeah. And the first night, well, I woke up with sore throat like a little bit, but like a week before that, I was in the car singing and I was like hurting my, my vocal cords singing. So I had a sore throat from that. So I just thought, because the night before, it was just from me singing. But it turns out I had COVID. I had like chills. My body was aching and everything. <laughs> I had a fever. And I was at my girlfriend's house. Oh, so I was like, fuck, I'm about, to get, I'm about to get them infected too. Yeah. But they actually don't. They're fine. They're chilling. Do you remember what you were singing? Uh, I think it was... Um, it was a fallout boy song it was uh my something a lawyer blah blah blah. i don't know but it was that in my chemical romance how uh damn i remember you you went to test and that's the day my whole family tested Test on thursday bro. yeah so yeah the i think i got it from ray at work motherfucker <laughs> on that saturday he was he was like drinking tea and he never drinks tea. He always <laughs> drinks water. And I was, Hello. Why are you, why are you <laughs> drinking that, make bro? Connections, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's whatever. I mean, I got my paid time off. I'd rather test positive for COVID than have to use my sick days. Right. So I can get that paid time. But um, I'm better now. We're back from our two week break. That's our little holiday break. Yeah. The Lance holiday paid vacation. Just kidding. But yeah, the um so the fights were um last Saturday, this past Saturday. Yeah, Saturday. What'd you think about the the combing? You were heated about the combing. Yeah. I'm just a big Moreno fan. <laughs> but like how about before we get into this, let's let's go back to like the fucking conference, dude. Okay. That shit was so hard to watch. With Figgy, both of them? Uh Figgy. I mean it's not even Figgy, it's his fucking corner, right? Yeah. Coach Eric lame ass Triple coach. C. It's, oh. Honestly, the king's a cringe, obviously. You could tell they were just whispering in his fucking ear because he had an airpod in. Or just AirPod oh, yeah. was fucking hanging on for dear life. Oh my god. <laughs> But there was that, but then um, just like the French reporters trying to like get Francis all fucking fired up, like oh, instigating, kind of like I get reporters do that shit, but mm-hmm. like have some respect, bro. You could tell that dude was just biased and just towards gone, which yeah, whatever. But the fight was really good. I did think Moreno won. I I think he won. He was up on strikes, obviously. Mm-hmm. But it was the fucking... Uh, the knockdowns? The knockdowns. It was three, dude. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. At the end of the fight, I was like, fuck. Let's see how they judge this one. And fucking Fig got the belt. And yeah. Unanimous, too. Unanimous. That shit is nuts. And one of them was... What was one of the scores? 50-47? Was it? 49-47? Yeah, I think it was 49-46. Oh. Oh, 49-46. Yeah. Just crazy, man. Yeah. Um... Like you said, so the first round, it was a toss-up. I didn't know who took the first round. Second round was Moreno, I think. And then the third round, was that the first, that was knockdown, the first knockdown from Figgy? Yes. So that one, it was like all Moreno until that uh, knockdown mm-hmm. in like the last minute. So it's like, fuck, what do you do with that? And then the fourth round, uh, I think Moreno got a takedown, but then he got knocked down. So, I'm not too sure how the scoring works. Yeah, it's the weird. Judges. The whole judging is fucking weird. Man. Yeah. 
But I guess we're going to see a fourth. We, I thought it was going to be a tie. Honestly. Or Ty or Moreno takes it. By a split. By a split, yeah. Because yeah. like you said, um, uh, look at like the way you beat a title, the way you beat a champion is you have to like destroy <laughs> them. That's fucking fire though. Because like, that's five. the only thing I think about when it comes to winning title fights. Like you either finish the opponent mm-hmm. or you completely just dominate him and if yeah. if you're listening and like you haven't watched the Kumaru and Tyron fight like that's how you win a fucking belt mm-hmm. it's true I like I was fine with Figgy winning I was like I guess so but when you said that, I was like damn that's very true it's weird man we're always gonna have this problem dude mm-hmm. yeah I don't know what the judges I mean they can't go they can't look at replays no. There's only three judges when there should be like a bigger pool of judges, you know. Yeah. It it doesn't make sense to me, and I feel like nothing about the judges' rules or how they judge has changed since. And I don't feel like it's going to change at all. Yeah. Like I don't see them doing like PFL route where the judges score it after each round. And they know do yeah. the fighters know. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I mean, which is cool because it kind of pushes the fighter that's losing to mm-hmm. fucking go broke, go for broke. Yeah, but it is what it is. We're gonna see a fourth. Yeah, I don't know. <clears throat> Heading into the fight, I was like, man, I don't want to watch a fourth. But then it was a really good fight. Yeah. So I was like, I'll watch a fourth. But then what about all the other flyweights just just no, waiting? No, just you like, know, fuck, dude, I gotta fight again. There's a wait list. Yeah. I had to wait a whole year to possibly get a fucking chance. At least they made all those fights really um, in a short amount of time. Because, like, the first fight was, what, last beginning of last year, maybe? Mm-hmm. And they're already on their third, so. Yeah. It's only a year off, but when you're a fighter, those just one year is a lot of time, you know? So, I guess we get a fourth. Did you watch the post-conference? I didn't. Yeah, I had to. Oh, yeah. Dana wasn't there, right? No, we'll, we'll talk about that. <laughs> but like Moreno, yeah, he's just fucking sad. He was just taking it all in. Yeah. <clears throat> I didn't watch it, but. He's like, you know, I lost. Uh, you know, I can I can feel everything. It hurts, but we're going to go for it again. Mm-hmm. Damn. That's what, like, with Dana, he has some sort of, like, back like back of mind um visions of who he wants as champion because like with moreno he's a mexican-born champion that's gonna pull a whole bunch of uh people from mexico to watch moreno's cards but now he has no no money maker in mexico and it's possible they take that fourth to fucking brazil dude oh I feel like there hasn't been a fight in Brazil in a while. I know. Just because of what's going on, but... Mm. Fuck, dude. That'd be dope. Yeah. I'm down for that. When I was watching um, the uh, uh, Road to 270, when they're talking about um, uh, Figgy, when they went to his little town, I was like, damn... This dude is a UFC champion, and he's born in this small right on the town. fucking beach, dude. It's so cool to, to like, it's legit fighters from every single part of the world. Mm-hmm. From nowhere. It's like From God, nothing, dude. Yeah, it's like goddamn yeah. Mortal Kombat, you know? Yeah, and you look at guys like Jose, too. Like, he's still riding his moped to his small-ass gym. Yeah. It's fucking beautiful. Yeah, Jose, Charles Oliveira still trains there, lives there. Brazil's rough, too, bro. Yeah. Oh, my God. You think it's all like beautiful tropics, but so you gotta go like to, to the nitty gritty. Yeah, you gotta stay woke. But uh, <clears throat> so main event. <laughs> Fuck. I mean, there was so much on Francis's plate prior to the fight. Mm-hmm. You know, the media just blowing it up like former coach fighting his former teammate his contract Mm -hmm. his money like he he fucking stated to ariel that he's basically down like seven million since that stipe fight wow that's fucked up um so there's all that Mm -hmm. 
then three weeks prior to the fight he got that mcl tear Mm -hmm. which he mentioned was like a grade three which is the most severe and like these acl and mcls like they all require fucking surgery yeah and like like let's look at tom cruise he was out for like nine months dude yeah and francis Mm -hmm. did that shit three weeks prior yeah that's nuts so his his cornerman and the doctor were like you should just withdraw from the fight Mm -hmm. and francis is like no there's so much on the line right now i can't just let this go who knows if i push this fight back i get injured again and it's much worse you know yeah so there's all that and obviously that shit in the conference like i said the fucking french uh reporter was just starting shit up but (laughs) Yeah, going into the fight, what'd you think? Going into the fight, I wanted... No, nah, I was neutral. I I knew that Gon was going to be just too fast, but I wasn't sure the game plan of Nganu's camp, how they're going to deal with it. But, I mean, they did fantastic. They told him they never wanted him to like chase the knockout, mm-hmm. which was smart. He didn't, he didn't get crazy tired, <clears throat> but... Man, I really thought it was just going to be five rounds of gone piecing him right. up with the points. Like midway through the first, like Francis already, he's already breathing hard yeah. out of his mouth. Mm-hmm. I'm like, fuck, dude. He needs to pace himself. Mm-hmm. But like, so I, I think he won the first. It's just exchanges, exchanges. Mm-hmm. Gone wins the second. He's up on strikes. And that third round was just everything for Francis, dude. Mm-hmm. Um, that's when gone through the kick. Oh, Francis the, the caught it. Kick. Yeah. Took, took him, him down, down, went straight into side control. I'm like, dude, what the fuck is going on? Yeah. This is usually like when Francis breaks down. Uh-huh. And um just doesn't know what to do. Yeah. And you can see at the end of the third, um, you know, Herb splits him up. Francis goes to his corner and you see Coach Eric come in and he's just like staring down Gone as Gone's like picking himself up off the ground. Mm-hmm. And he points at Gon. He looks at Francis like, look what you're doing to him. Yeah. Like, you're completely fucking up his game plan. He's overwhelmed by you and your strength. And, like, yeah, <clears throat> it was crazy. Like, everything that was being shown by Francis after that third mm-hmm. it was amazing, dude. It was, like, the takedowns, the wrist control, bro. It was crazy. Yeah. When you're – um, I thought uh, Francis – was gonna get like rocked and knocked out but the dude's actually just a tank yeah like i remember remember the elbow that gone landed like the fucking yair rodriguez elbow like on his way out yeah yeah i was like damn i'm not too sure how much it connected but i mean a fucking elbow's an elbow you know especially guy from gone yeah so like when you have heavyweight power with an elbow attached to that and then like all the head kicks that he was landing, all the punches, and then Nganu just took everything. Kept coming. Kept there the was no, out. like, he never got rocked. But, oh my god. That was crazy. Yeah, that, that, that fifth round was crazy, dude. Because um, Gon got the single leg. Mm-hmm. Francis, again, controlled the fucking wrist, kept him in guard. Then he fucking sweeps him, bro. Yeah. I'm like, what the fuck, <laughs> What's dude? going on? It's crazy. <laughs> it's so awesome to see, though. Like, he's evolving as a fighter, bro. Yeah. Yeah, he's still a young fighter, mm-hmm. which is crazy. Like, he was just, you know, all based on his striking, and then now he's incorporating his wrestling. And then with Usman as in your corner, I mean... That's huge. You're chilling, you know? Yeah. Man, Francis. I hope that when Dana wasn't there to put the belt on, I was like, damn. Now he knows he has to pay that man. Yeah, I saw McMahon. I was like, there's no fucking way. You couldn't just wrap it around his yeah. belt, dude? I don't know, dude. The whole... The way the UFC just conducts like business and shit is just... I mean, they always win. The house always wins. That's what Ariel said. Yeah. And I don't know. Do you, do you think Francis should continue to fight in the UFC or should he take this, his boxing route? I don't know. I mean, if Francis is going to go the boxing route, it's going to be hard for him to 
like does he just go straight into the money fights does he fight tyson fury because there's no i tyson fury's gonna destroy him i would think yeah you know so it's just like who does he fight if he does do the boxing route but then with ufc it's like dana has to pay them a little bit more man you know yeah it's like especially francis a guy like francis yeah it's one of one it's fucked up but i think um if he does go boxing i think he has to take that fight because if he doesn't he's not really gonna get a big platform dude right yeah yeah so you either stick to the ufc or you get that tyson fight. yeah it's gonna be a good paycheck but dude he's gonna get fucked up yeah yeah, when I was watching um the countdown for uh Nganu, when his French coach when Nganu originally went to his gym and he was like, I wanna do boxing and he's like, No, I'm gonna have you do MMA. I mean, there's more money in boxing, you know. Maybe I don't know, maybe they just didn't realize it, but you get twice as much money. At the least, when you're doing boxing. Yeah. I hope he stays. Yeah, me too. I hope he stays and Bones comes out and takes that fight. So who do you think wins? Bones. Bones? Yes. Whoa. Yeah. I just don't want Bones. I want Bones to stop this fucking game, bro. Mm. Like This Twitter game, bro. Just fucking fight. Bones is turning into a... Uh... What's his name? Dylan Dennis. <laughs> In a way, yeah. But yeah. I'd, I'd be really excited to see how Bones can put up with that. Because the way I see it is that, like, obviously Bones is going to be faster. Like, I just see, like, a, a smaller serial gun in terms of striking. But then Ngannou's power is just... 10 times stronger than Mm -hmm. John Jones. So it's like, yeah, John Jones is a wrestler, but I think that's hard to, ah, fuck. Do you see? It's hard, dude. Yeah. It's hard to outpower a heavyweight. That's naturally a heavyweight, you know? Because anyone like anyone in heavyweight, like heavyweight can be like, I face guys like this. Like, no, you've never faced a guy with the power of fucking Francis, bro. Man. A good fight. So I was thinking um, in the post fight, if Dana was there, I wanted to hear his opinion on the Moreno fight. Because if Dana's like, uh, I mean, it's it was at the very least, it should have been a tie. Or if he was pissed at how Figgy won, then they're going to make the rematch, no doubt. But it just depended on how Dana was feeling. If he was there, I, I kind of feel like he would choose like the fucking don't leave it to the judges kind of talk. Because mm. mm-hmm. anything can happen. And he'd be all about making the fourth because it's obviously going to make them a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Were you ever excited to watch Demetrius Johnson fight? Yeah. Yeah. For all of it. Yeah. All of the. I'm not too sure. I mean, I was probably excited for, like, when he fought Cejudo, um, and then he fought someone else. Is it the Benavides fight? I don't think so, just because I... <laughs> Benavides, <laughs> I'm not too... I just, I feel bad for Benavides, you know? But... He tried. Um, yeah. Maybe it was John Lineker. Did, was Lineker uh-huh. a flyweight? He was, yeah. Yeah, I think it was that fight that I was excited for. But, um, I mean, kudos to Johnson. He always made it exciting. Mm-hmm. He always made sure that he was the champ champ, you know. <clears throat> always trying to find the finish. But I'm sure uh, Figgy and Moreno brought in so much more money than him. Oh. Like, Dana always found a struggle with trying to figure out Demetrius Johnson. But, I mean, there's much more flyweights now. There is. So, that's exciting. But it's hard when you go have a guy like DJ or Triple C with the belt and there's no... He's, like, they're unstoppable, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. And then, like, 
Demetrius wasn't much of a, a promoter. Yeah. You know, so. That makes it hard, too. hard too. Yeah, I was thinking, I was asking Ray, I was like, is there a Brazilian fighter that's like known for his trash talking? Can you think of one? Fuck, man. <laughs> no, right? They're all so nice. <laughs> Just because, like, you have to, you're forced to speak English. Yeah. And then on top of that, you have to think of English words to trash talk with. So it's hard. So when it does come out, it sounds Moreno, so Moreno, cry baby, <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> like, it just sounds bad. But then that's where their skill comes in, where they just, Brazilian fighters are fun to watch. Fucking Marino. Feel bad for him. He'll be back. Yeah. Gone will be back too. You think uh, Kai Cardo France is up there? Gets a shot? I think so. <clears throat> and then um, what's his name? Eddie. Is it Eddie Roy Royval? Roy Royal? Royval? Fuck. He just fought on the. Um, the previous card. Eddie, or are you talking about Brandon? Oh, maybe Brandon. I think, I think he lost, dude. I thought that was a split decision where he wasn't happy. He was like, I'm so, he was very apologetic yeah. that he didn't yeah. make it. That's right. Yeah. He's a flyweight? He did fight Moreno before oh. the Figgy fight. Mm. Moreno beating Rival is what got him the title fight the first time. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, so there's a bunch of good flyweight fighters right now. <sighs> Anything else you want to add to that card? I don't think Gon should get an immediate rematch. No. As much as he wants to. Like, you had your chance, right? I wonder what Stipe, what he plans to Stipe's do. Stipe's like another story too, bro. Like, the fuck? Is he retired? Does he not want to? No. He's, he's just... never been, like, vocal about the rematch, mm -hmm. huh? He's just chilling. <laughs> He's just so fighting fire. fire. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's funny. Yeah, I'd love to see a Stipe rematch. Yeah. I wonder why he, why Dana never made it happen. Yeah, I don't know what happened with that. You hear they're trying to sue um, Francis's manager? Mm -mm. So the night of the fight, fight or the conference, um, Francis was getting dressed and his manager was like, what the fuck? And Francis is like, what? He's like, the UFC just sent me an email saying they're trying to sue me because they think we're making negotiations with Jake Paul and his crew. Mm. Jake Paul. <laughs> yeah, dude. Because <laughs> <laughs> I guess um, the guy with Jake Paul used to be the chief financial officer for the UFC. Uh-huh. But now he's working with Jake Paul and like, you know. Oh. That shit's I feel like I heard weird. About this. Because Francis was like, I don't even know who the fuck that guy is. Yeah, Jake Paul. <laughs> no, it's uh, the... his partner. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> what about, um? how do you feel about Izzy versus Whitaker too? Dude, I don't know. King said this morning that Bobby Knuckles takes it. Uh -huh. I don't know how he takes it though. I remember you said in the past that he just has to do the same shit he does, but just not get caught. I mean, what else are you going to fucking yeah. <laughs> do? Because <laughs> Izzy can grapple too. But it's like, mm -hmm. Whitaker was doing fine in the fight until he got fucking caught like that. Mm -hmm. So I'm assuming, yeah, obviously his team, him and his team are going to touch up on some things, but Izzy's getting better too, dude. Yeah. That is a scary fucking striker. <laughs> He's so flashy. Such a good fight. Such a good fight. Izzy fucking promotes the shit out of. Yeah. yeah. I hope Whitaker doesn't get injured before the fight. I know, dude. I hope I none of them out. Oh, fuck, dude. I love both those guys. That dude is so injury prone. <laughs> <laughs> you ever see him on embedded and shit? Uh -uh. He's such a bully to his fucking friends, dude. <laughs> 
He just like trips on them, just fucking pushes them. <laughs> <laughs> what an asshole! You know, <laughs> you know when you grew up as a kid and there's some kid over there just tripping everybody, yeah, just like tossing, kicking them. the leg, yeah, <laughs> hip tossing. Yeah, that was fucking James, dude. Wrestler James with his Faith Lutheran hoodie. Um, do you do you make uh New Year's resolutions? Do you make goals every year? Yeah, but they're pretty basic. Mm-hmm. Like you're not like um writing it down, writing the steps of how to get to that goal and everything. No, I don't go that deep. Yeah. It's more like I'm going to read more. Mm. I'm going to research more shit that I'm into. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, um, I'm making a goal for this year. Usually, I mean, I'll do the same. I'll make a basic goal. But <clears throat> I usually lose sight of it like, you know, two, three months in. That's usually the case. Yeah. Yeah. Especially fitness goals. Fitness goals yeah, are the fitness worst. Fitness goals are fucking weird. And I don't know why you need to start at the beginning of the year for a fitness That's what goal. I was saying. Like, I was yeah, I was thinking that today. Like, when people say, I'm going to work out, I'm going to get in shape. Like, dude, you should be doing that every fucking day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You, well, you're going to wait a whole year just to fucking eat better? Yeah, exactly. It's, it's just stupid. And you're going to give up this fucking goal in within, like, <laughs> three or four weeks, bro. That uh-huh. gym is empty. Yeah. Yeah. It happens. Yeah, so I made it a goal, a fitness goal to work out. <laughs> <laughs> so, I just fucking roasted you. <laughs> so I made it a goal to work out. Yeah. Because back in the day in like 2013, I worked out four days a week, every single week for, I don't know, a year and a half. Mm. And I wasn't like muscular but i was skinny i was like pretty i was happy with my weight i was happy with how i looked i would always look back at pictures nowadays where i'm like damn i was skinny we were kids though yeah exactly yeah bunch of dumbass dude i got my (laughs) i got my uh license renewed yeah to get the real id Mm -hmm. with the star yesterday and um i looked at my weight 150 i right weigh now? like 165 right now oh wow i gained 15 pounds from like i don't know 2014 to now all fat weight not no muscle <laughs> <laughs> but anyways i made it a goal and i went the first week i was very proud of myself i was running i did my whatever muscle groups i had to do and then that was it and then i got covid and then the spike in covid now my mom's freaking out again Mm -hmm. so i'm not going to the gym now fuck so thanks covid but you think about getting like buying weights so you could do them at home Mm. like a kettlebell i don't think so because i i do have weights and i would tell myself i will but i'm just too distracted with what i have that's the thing out like working out at home too like everything's here yeah it's like you can easily be like all right i'm fucking done yeah exactly yeah, yeah like you don't have to drive you don't have to get out of your way to drive somewhere getting dressed getting dressed all that. i'd like a home gym bro I'll fucking do some squats naked <laughs> in your garage yeah <laughs> <laughs> that too when i saw moreno with this fucking home gym and they're loud as fuck yeah i wonder what their neighbors think with their oh, yeah, music the fucking... blasting, you just hear fucking weights being dropped. The neighbors probably ready to just fucking shoot them the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, okay, so another goal that I made for this channel in particular. Um obviously I want it to grow, but I <clears throat> I wanna be like in those uh pre fight or post fight conferences mm. to be a reporter and be like, hey, uh ian Krosu from the land podcast uh yeah. uh israel how do you feel about blah 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 i think that'd be dope that'd be cool i don't know how easy it is though to get in i think the ufc is very selective with their reporters yeah well i don't know what the fuck happened to anaheim dude 
with all those French ones. Yeah. Just, Maybe they just didn't know. They didn't know, right? Yeah. Yeah, because sometimes they let fans fucking ask too. It's like, yeah. What the fuck? So I'm like, damn, do I like get in that way or what do I do? Maybe I just have to talk to all like the low level fighters that don't get a lot of questions. Yeah. And then just work my way up. Just get them in here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah that'd be dope. <clears throat> I'll get uh, I'll knock on Brandon Moreno's door, ask him a question or two. <laughs> you have any other Goals. resolutions? I think that's it. I do. I did set two money goals. Money, as in like what I want to buy this year. That's good. So one of them is a handgun. Um, and then the other one was. Just more stuff for the podcast. Yeah. I don't want to be spending stuff on stupid shit that won't benefit me later on. That's my problem. Yeah. It's hard. Yeah. But yeah. Happy New Year's. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) That is the end of this podcast, I believe. Thank you for patiently waiting for us to get healthier. See you next week. (laughs) Peace out. Peace out.